start the Okay, so we do have a quorum. Okay, thank you very much. So um, item number two, we will go to general public comment, which should be on non-agenda items, but that are within the Neighborhood Council's subject matter jurisdiction. Each speaker will be allowed two minutes for speaking. Okay, and if you have already spoken for two minutes and want to say something else, please wait until everybody, other people have spoken and had their turn, and then we can come back to you. Thank you very much. Press nine, star nine to raise your hand if you are on the phone and praise, press star six to unmute yourself. Thank you. Mostly, can you see if anybody is wanting to speak? I. I don't see any hands raised from our stakeholders. Okay. Um, nor any phones changed, right? No. Raise a hand. Oh, yes, it does. Number nine to raise a hand. Thank you. And okay. Joan, we may want to consider just going quickly to item four. Okay. To uh, take those votes and then go back to our reports. Administrative motions? Yes. Okay. All of them? Yes. Okay. So we can vote on everything. How about the fis the budget and so forth? Isn't that also important? Well, I think we'll still have a quorum and they take a little more discussion. So. Okay. So then um, we will go to item 4A, approval of the February 13th, 2024 board minutes, uh, followed by a vote. Do I have a, a, a motion to approve these board minutes? Anybody? Unmute your motion. Ah, oh, thank you, Keith. And a second? I second, Frankie. Thank you, Frankie. Okay. Um, um, is there any discussion, any changes that you've seen, anybody? So then if we're all happy with the board minutes as presented, then let us go on to the roll call or the vote call. Rosalie? Uh, Joan Jacobs? Yes. Rosalie Preston, yes. Keith Pitts? Yes. Librarian Frerix. Oh, wait, I need to. I'll come back to Laverne. I'm putting her as a panelist. I'm trying to make her a panelist. Okay. Um, Nita Stonehawker. Yes. Dave Trejo. Yes. RV Powell. Yes. Eva Cooper Pace. Yes. Marvin Bell. Yes. Oscar Ruiz. Yes. Frankie Mays. Yes. Uh, Craig Kusinoki. Uh, abstain. Okay. And uh, Laverne Frerich. Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Then item 4B, approval of the February 2024 monthly expenditure report. Um, I call for a motion. Rosalie Preston makes a motion to approve. I second. Marvin makes Seconds, should we share the screen for, or can Keith just quickly go over the expenditures? I do not know how to share the screening. Can't yeah, share the screen, okay. Rosalie. Okay, thank you. Can you, can you um, share the screen, Rosalie? Share my screen, you mean? Yeah, because I can't. Yeah, let's see. I've got to pull it up here. I have it up on my, my computer, but it, I don't have the capacity to do it. Neither do I. Sorry. Um, I think it only means. I 
think it's only Miguel who can do that, who has that capacity. I think, Mi I think Miguel and Rosalie. Miguel and Rosalie, okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm pulling it up on my laptop. I hope it opens. If you hover over share screen, you should be able to like right click or click on it and allow other panelists to share their screen. And then that would allow Keith to do it. Right, but I th I think on Zoom you have to have the uh, permission or be in a certain position to do that. Uh, yeah, no, that's what I mean. I mean, uh, Miguel yeah. or Rosalie should, as host or co-host, be able to hover over that share screen green button and right click or click on the side of it and then enable screen sharing for panelists. Right. Are you? A yeah, host? It's not. It's not doing it, and. Um... I'm getting ready to get a new laptop. This one is giving me trouble sometimes. So, so Keith, if you could so perhaps just, Keith could just um go yeah, over quickly go us. over. Thank you, Keith. Okay, we have a beginning balance of twenty three thousand five hundred and fifty two dollars and twenty eight cents. Total spent was two thousand one hundred and twenty four dollars and thirty one cents leaving a remaining balance of $21,427.97. Outstanding, we have $964.19. We have committed $2,000, and we have a net available of $18,463.78. I'll skip down to... Hold on. The expenditures. Um, we had AT&T. We paid $69.55. In motion hosting. They are the uh, website hosting people. Uh, we spent $215.88. Uh, the general membership location rental was $228. Uh, the uh, website update monthly payment was $200. February went rent, which was $670. Uh, our general membership meeting flyers for January was $664.79. And the uh, copier bill was $67.09 making it a total expenditure of $2,124.31. Thank you. What we have outstanding is uh, the interpreter still, $200. We have the copier lease of $76.09 that is still outstanding. AT&T monthly telephone bill of $18.10, still outstanding. And the uh, March rent for $670. Those things have been approved. Thank you, Keith. And, right. and then I call for a motion to approve the February 2024 monthly expenditure report. Uh, Rosalie and Marvin already made the motion and second, so. Oh, yes, we did. I'm so sorry. Yes, we're going on to item 4C, approval of up to three. Oh, yeah. So we have oh, to no, have the vote. Roll call is what it is. Okay. The vote call, please. Thank you. Um. Rosalie Preston, yes. Keith Pitts. Yes. Laverne Ferrex. Yes. Nita Stonehawker. Yes. Dave Trejo. Yes. RV Powell. Yes. Eva Cooper Pace. Yes. Marvin Bill. Yes. Oscar Reese. Yes. Frankie Mays. Yes. Uh, Will Yates. Yes. Craig Kusanaki. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Thank you very much.
Okay, now we go on to item 4C, approval of the up to $350 to support the April cleanup day in District 7. Do I may have a motion? Uh, Rosalie makes the motion. Second, please. Frankie, second. Thank you very much. So I just want to explain that uh, Barbara's out of town, so she couldn't be here today. We have discussed it a little. There still isn't an, an exact date in April, but and the the cost is probably higher than what it will actually be. Um, most likely, I made an estimate for sandwiches and some beverages for about twenty volunteers, and made it a little on the high side. So. Um, so when she gets back, then we have to, you know, work out a detailed budget and submit the event approval form to the funding for approval. When is the date? Do you know which date? No, we don't know which date in April. I'm assuming it's later in April so that we can have a full th at least 30 days for funding to review and approve. Right. Right, yes. Okay, thank you. So um, I request, I think I have that ready. I, I call for a motion. Um, yes. So the motion's been made and now we'll, if there's no other questions, we'll do yeah. the... Uh, uh, it's been a long day for me. Yes. Rosalie, did you get um, a Caviano, um email? For today, I don't think I saw it, no. Okay, well, for tonight, um, she's explaining that some people, their training has expired and they do not count for quorum. No, do they yeah, no, I, I'm aware of all of that, so. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, so if there's no questions on the... Motion. Um, can I can I ask a question? Because I I see I feel like uh, with the funding requests, like we have to have our T's crossed and our I's dotted in order for them to be funded, or they get um, denied and and sent back and keep us to do more work. I'm. It feels like we're approving three hundred and fifty without an actual plan. Um, and so I don't know that. Like it doesn't seem like this is ready for a vote. I know that. Um. It doesn't like it won't be more expensive than that, but I'm this feels like the first time I've been on the board and we're making a vote for something without anything locked in, um, so much as a date, um, or anything like that. It, it feels um, different than other votes we've made, and I know it's not it's not a, a huge amount. It just it feels like we're voting for something without a plan or someone to speak on it. Yeah, well, I did make an estimate for just for the sake of the budget uh, for 20, I believe 20 sandwiches from um, one of the sandwich places, I always forget the name um, that we've used in the past and, uh, and then some amount for sodas. We, we do have bottled, some bottled water and in case we needed to get a little bottled water so so it probably would not once we can work with Barbara the final budget probably will be quite a bit less and it'll be more exact I did ask her if she thought about trying to do some flyers and she thought that you know we could print the flyers ourselves and have volunteers distribute them in the area. I imagine the cleanup is going to focus on San Pedro under the 105 freeway in that area. So um, we could probably have the 118th Street School help with some of the flyer and advertising. So it's probably going to be less. I just wanted to put in a little more in case we're also going to pay for chips or something like that. But. 
also, Dave, um, we do have to get it in if we want, if this is um, planned for April, then we do need to have it in 30 days before the, um, for, for the department to approve the funding for it. Um, the exact day in April, I don't think matters very much I, um, insofar as April only has four Saturdays or something. Um, I, I don't think that's a problem is what I'm, I'm really saying. Uh, as long as we have the funding and we, we are definitely preparing for April, we're not preparing to go earlier than that. If there are any changes to the plans we do have, then we will just it would just be put off if, and we would come back at our next meeting and um, and make and do another vote on this, the change of uh, either the amount. If it's more money, then we do have to have another vote. If it becomes less money, then it doesn't matter. That's okay. Got it. And then just for clarity's sake, when um, and before funding is really released, Keith would have to submit more of an itemized request. Laura will no be. no this De is fine. definitely yes definitely oh, yes. yeah definitely once Barbara's back we're going to work on a detailed budget the event approval form must be filled out oh send it to the department yes yes detailed and, and all that has to be submitted to the department you're quite right for review yes I thought you meant coming okay. back to the board with it again no no but again, no no no, no. no to get funding it, yes. all of the information would have to be precise as far yeah. as what we are paying for yeah that's absolutely it just seemed true. like an, it, yeah yeah okay. it just seemed like an interesting oh. precedent but yeah I'm, I'm okay I can move forward about I, I I have my hand up. Eva. Um, I'm not clear on all of this. I thought that when we got called for the question to vote, that all of these details were nailed down. And it doesn't sound as though they are. Um, in that regard, I will change my vote to abstaining. Okay, that's fine. We'll when we get to the vote, you can do that. Yeah, because okay. this, this, Are there this, any other? This, yeah, this still sounds kind of up in the air and willy nilly. And well, Jen, Lou, Lou Watson <laughs> has her hand raised. Lou. Hi, Lou. Are you able to? Oh, yes. Lou, could you unmute yourself? I don't see how to do it. Okay. Oh, there yes. You, you are just unmuted. Did. You were just unmuted. <laughs> oh, now you're muted again. Are you on the telephone or on your computer? I'm, you know, on a, a computer type thing. You managed to unmute for a second there. Lou, you have to move your cursor down to the bottom of your screen and then you'll see your button show up. Okay, so I'm sorry. Did we vote or did we not vote? We're getting ready for the roll question, call now. And Lou has a this comment. This is the question for $350 for a cleanup for District 7. It's up to, up to. Up to $350 for a cleanup for District 7 that has no date. Right. It's, re it's really to April. cover the refreshments. Uh-huh. But we don't know exactly what their cleanup entails, right? Without Barbara know. explaining it. Well, we I'm pretty sure it's going to be around the San Pedro area, maybe 118th Street and 116th place near the 118th Street School. So and they'll, okay. you know, they'll they'll ask. Council District 15 for assistance in getting the brooms and 
shovels and trash bags, et cetera. And pretty much, I think all we're going to cover is this, the sandwiches or other refreshments and beverages. Okay, I think Lou is un, un, unmuted now. Lou, can you go ahead and ask your question or your comment? Thanks. Can you hear me at all? Perfect. Okay. No, I've been trying to unmute myself, but this will way back for the for the minutes. So I'm just gonna let it go because okay. this right now you've already voted on the minutes, and I had um, I had a, a correction and I had a, a request, but that's okay. Lou, please email because we can edit that afterwards. Okay, something very simple, but I can say right now, I would like for the pages to be numbered for the minutes, and I'll tell you what the correction is. I'll call you. Or email, thank you. I'll email you. Can we do that if we, I mean, can we do minutes we do can always the, Minutes can always be corrected afterwards, yeah, for minor after stuff. After the vote? Yes. And we voted on it and approved it? Yes. Not, we don't have to say approved as corrected? No. Or okay. approved with necessary corrections. No, we do not. Yeah, we could do something like that. Okay. Okay, so let's do the roll call on the cleanup. Okay, good. Please go ahead, Rosalie. Thank you. Rosalie Preston, yes. Keith Pitts. Yes. Liburn Frericks. Yes. Nita Stonehawker. Yes. Hey, Trey. Somebody mute themselves who yes. has that background noise, please. RV Powell. RV Powell. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, I'm gonna say um, um, abstain right now because it's okay. not okay um, thank you eva cooper Paige. i abstain also okay marvin bell yes oscar ruiz yes frankie mays yes jackie jackson yes uh will yates yes Craig Kusanaki. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. So then we'll go back to number three, three one. Right. Item number two. Yes. Uh, no, we had item number two. And item number three, a report from the LAPD, who I think I saw earlier is here. Yeah, it says Officer Martinez. Ah, yes. Thank you, Officer Martinez. Hi. Uh, okay, real, real quick. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we've been pretty active uh, this last month and the last few weeks. Mr. Trejo, just to start off with, I really, really appreciate all your um, gang graffiti, The um, what you've been sending me. I've been forwarding it to my captain and to um, our gang officers and to my Sergeant Spangler. Um, so uh, South Bureau wants to know about all the gang graffiti that's happening and what's going on. Um, as we talk about that, let me jump into something real quick. There's been, um, I talked to our um, two gang officers that work Southeast Division and they're currently um, assigned down there in the South End, my area. Uh, so it's, I guess it surrounds the Gardena area um, we're talking about on the gateway. And they were talking, they had a shooting um, last let me get the information out. There's a um, there was a homicide on March 3rd, and it was over at the uh, let me get make sure El Diamante Sports Bar. That was at 120th and Figueroa, and um, apparently a um, South Los individual was shot in the head and was killed. I'm very unfortunate. Later on, um, there was a retaliation down there in Gardena off of Marine Street in Vermont, where um, an individual wearing a green shirt. Um, I talked to uh, guardian officers. They said he was unfortunate. He wasn't a gang member. He's more like a transient, but he was wearing a green shirt. And uh, Gardena 13 identifies um, themselves with wearing green, Green Bay Packers colors. 
and he was uh, shot. I don't know the status of him of what happened there, uh, but right now they're looking into it. They're they're looking on what's happening. They're they're um, as far as schools and the surrounding area, nobody's really involved with that. But uh, they're working with our captain. They, they're doing write ups to see if uh, we can get extra patrol down there. Um, they're meeting with store managers and store owners, and they're handing out business cards for any uh, additional information for them, for the officers. But they're they're being active down there, and um, I'm requesting extra patrol from our officers also to get down there. But but Dave, thanks again for all that um, uh, graffiti information. It's horrible that you have to report that, but um, it, it really helps us out too. And I keep everything and I forward it. So uh, right now that's 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 a homicide that occurred and, and we're kind of looking at the two gangs that are involved so we're just we're keeping an eye on that and anything further comes out i'll try to reach out to the uh, harbor gateway um and to the community also and then um, what we've been working on um in as slow 97 uh 130th and 132nd street last week we had some cleanups uh there was a couple hiccups in the cleanups but we did do one of the business districts on 130th street we cleaned the sidewalks these are cul-de-sacs right off Figueroa, the 500 West Block, and they're saturated with motorhomes. So I'm working with CD15, and we're going to try to get them removed. But we did clean up the area, and um, I don't know if Lou, I see, Lou, I don't know if Lou had a question or not. But if you could just hold off, and I can answer questions afterwards. But um, so real quick, we cleaned up that, and then uh, today, uh, myself and a fellow slows, we work with a Council District Eight. We removed uh, three motorhomes off of Imperial Highway and Hoover. I'm sure some of you have uh, seen those. They've been there for a long time. So uh, outreach, everything was done. It was uh, a picture perfect day today for those. Um, everything was coordinated by CD8 and we, we handled those pretty good. So those were removed. Um, also, there's another incident. I don't know if you guys have been seen on TV. That, um, his name, it, it, it's already blasted out there, but John Ross, he lives in the Merritt Track down there in uh, Gardena. Um, it's our jurisdiction, LRPD. But anyways, recently, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, he hit a, a postal carrier and the news it got on the news and they posted it. I took a battery report for the individual. But if anybody's concerned about that incident, he's in custody and now the the... The federal officers for the post office are looking at it as a federal crime. So they're going to um, try to keep them behind bars and may eventually maybe uh, file charges on for that. But we still have um, a battery open uh, investigation that we took on him. And then we have several trespassings also. So, um, but right now he's in custody. And so we're, we're keeping an eye on him. He really goes into the neighborhoods and he's always trespassing at night. Uh, there's a lot of single individuals that live over there in the Meritrack. So we're really concerned and providing extra patrol and working on that. Um, and then uh, also we uh, we just been working with the senior leads with the cleanups in the surrounding area with council district 15 um, and eight and working with LA sanitation, uh, safe harbors and, and everything. I don't know if somebody is trying to talk right now, but um, just hang tight real quick. And then uh, other than that, I have a, a um, that right now is what I'm really focusing on are the motorhomes, the encampments, and we're trying to um, find, uh, I think I talked to Miss RV Powell about an individual on the 700 West block of 132nd street. He's, he's behind, uh, living behind some houses in the alley. And so we're trying to identify him. And I know RV has been helping me putting out his information or a description of him. So if anybody has any information on this individual, 700 West Block of 132nd in the alley. He's staying behind a couple houses over there. I really could use the information on that. And then um, one thing I did want to announce, we're going to have a town hall meeting on Tuesday, March 19th, or next Tuesday at 6, from 6 to 9. It's going to be at Gardena City Hall. It's located at 1700 West 162nd Street, Rumi. Rosalie, I will send you the flyer. I would hope everybody could come. I believe our um, our captain will be there and Chief Tingarides will also be there and um, a couple of guest speakers, but the Sheriff's Department will be there, um, Highway Patrol. I believe the mayor from Garnin will be down there. So there's a lot of people down there and we'd love to hear the concerns of the community and the business districts. Um, this we do, uh, we're going to try to do it periodically. We did one last year, 
very successful, but I want to hear from the community. So if you can really blast this out, I'd appreciate it. We've already started doing that also, but um, as for, for me, that's what I have going on. Um, I know I, uh, any questions or concerns? I don't see any hands raised, Rosalie. Oh, oh. Oh, I have a question, Officer Martinez. Yes, Arlie. Um, do you guys have a a bulletin where somebody can look up missing persons? I believe we do. Um, we uh, be on the lookout type bulletins. We do. Um, some are for public use. Some are for internal. Um, I would have to, um, you know, we'd have to find out who you're looking for, and, and I can maybe kind of go through archives and look, you know, help you out on that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Are there any other Dave, Dave Trejo has his hand up. Thanks, Rosalie. Thank you, um, Officer Martinez, for um, forwarding over and following up with- um, No, thank you, the, Dave. The, the, the graffiti things. Um, I'm wondering if, um, um uh, well one i don't know if, if i have to if i should um refer it more to nick nicholas but um and, and the costa's office but the um the first one i would say is i'm hoping that um you all because there's a lot happening on gardena boulevard mm -hmm. um that you can take into account the dismissal times of gardena elementary and then of, of my school environmental charter middle um for the sake of just having increased patrol on gardena boulevard during during those times um, because the frequency of gang activity on Gardena is high and it, it is happening at dismissal time. Um, okay. And so I, I'm wondering if you all can take that into consideration, Gardena uh, Elementary and, and ours. Uh, absolutely, Dave. I, I appreciate that. Hey, Dave, just send me an email of the times and I can yeah. um, I, I can put it out there. And then, Dave, do you attend those collaborative meetings with um, all the principals that we have in um, – L.A. downtown, I believe it's a Damali school or a, a Dimali, or I'm not saying it right, but one of the high schools down there where we have it uh, monthly. Officer Gutierrez Low does it. I, I don't know that I've ever been invited because we're not LAUSD. We're um, no, I, I know you have. Yeah, I know you're not LAUSD. But let me let me find out with Gutierrez if if one of your representatives can meet take yeah. or, that. That would be awesome for you guys to attend. This way, you had a lot of good stuff to share on. Uh, on your email. I really appreciate all that stuff you put down. That's a, that's good information. And, and I would love to share that with other principals. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I appreciate that. I just want to take uh, uh Gardena Boulevard has been active and then Gardena elementary. I see yep. them, the, the boys and girls club walks over to pick them up every day. Um, and right. walk them over to the, to the boys and girls club. It'd be nice to have just extra patrol during that time. Yes, sir. Okay. I'll, and I'll, then, I'll, and, and then the other thing I was going to say is that maybe it's for, for Nick, but um, I don't know who um, runs graffiti abatement, but like I keep going back to using 311 data for folks to um, just make the rounds and not wait for 311 reports. If there are areas like a heat map of the most graffitied areas in the gateway, um, mm -hmm. can we have people drive them on a daily basis, whether or not they're reported? Um, and if they're not reported, then GAP can log that they did it. Um, and that way the turnaround time and how long it stays up um, gets truncated. I don't know if you have any um, guidance on that or who I should make that no, advocacy I, for. I, you know what? I can look into it with Nick and um, I can see if I can contact Gap and find out also. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like you. When I do see it, I report it. I usually do it with uh, yeah. 311 and then I put that I'm an officer and then I request um, like special attention because it is gang graffiti. And I usually yeah. get a pretty quick response. But let me find out if they can do like a a, a routine uh, patrol down there to keep it maintained. Yeah, MTA does something similar on their lines. They, okay. they have people that travel travel um, and and just like the most frequently graffiti areas and, and they self report. But like I'm sure the the data exists and I see Nick's hand, so um, I'll defer to okay. Nick. All right. Okay. Yeah, real quick, just to address that, I know Gap. They have uh, they kind of split their work into uh, areas. So I forget the uh, the name of the person who does kind of that Gardena Boulevard area, uh, but I know a lot of the times they're you know responding to tickets. Um, so I don't know if really they would have 
a lot of time to do proactive work, but I'll, I'll reach out to their supervisor and just kind of let them know. I know they're very responsive to the tickets. And like Officer Mar Martinez said, you know, when it's especially when it's gang related, um, but I'll, I'll get a better answer for okay. you. Yeah, they're, they're super responsive. And, I, and there's a lot of same day um, activity if I report it by 7 a.m. But God forbid that it gets reported after 7 a.m. It's going to be there when kids go to school and it's going to be there when kids leave school. Um, and that's the part that, like, I think is um, a shame. Um, and so I'm sure that their, their response to tickets is heavy. But even if it were something that when um, there's time and tickets are not as heavy in an area, that they drive certain routes um, proactively without waiting for a ticket or submitting the ticket on their own, I feel like that's something that hasn't been done. And, like, somebody can make that decision. I just don't know who that is. And that's what I'm asking for so I can lobby to that person. I know the current status quo is that uh, that's not being done, but I don't know who makes that decision because um, I'd like to speak with them. Okay. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or before Officer Martinez? Okay, if not, then we will continue with the program. And is there anyone here from the mayor's office? Nicholas. Sorry? No, jo uh, Jocelyn is here. She's. Yeah, but she skipped Nicholas. She's what? Oh, you Council skipped... District 15. Yeah, you skipped CD 15. I'm sorry, Keith. I'm not understanding what you're saying. Could you say it really slowly? <gasps> you skipped. CD 15. I know because I went to LAPD because I know they sometimes have, oh. uh, it can't stay so long. Okay. But, um, and I wasn't sure about mayor's office whether they could stay that long. But otherwise, yes, by all means, CD 15, please. Hello, I'm on here. I don't know. Did you guys already skip me? Who are you? Hi, I'm Jocelyn from the mayor's office. Ah, okay. Mayor's office. Thank you, Jocelyn. Yeah. Hi, sorry. I was um I'm actually at another neighborhood council meeting that's still uh meeting in person, so I'm trying to juggle both meetings right now. Um right. let me can you guys hear me okay? I'm sorry. Perfectly. Hello? Hello, yes, we can very well. Okay, I'm sorry. Um so I'll go ahead and get into my updates. Um first I just want to start by um, giving a huge shout out to the entire neighborhood council for their support. Um, we did have a inside safe neighborhood discussion uh, last month or like a couple of weeks ago now um, to kind of talk about the inside safe operation that our office did at Hoover um, under the 105 um, underpass, which is still clear today. So we wanted to have a neighborhood discussion around it to let the community know what happened that th the day of the operation and also how the community can um, be in contact with us if it tent um, does pop up again to make sure that that um, location um, stays clear. So huge shout outs to the Neighborhood Council for their support. I know there was a few board members there who attended. I know you guys um, shared it on your website, which I really appreciate. And huge shout out to Mr. Bell, who actually spoke on behalf of the Neighborhood Council. Uh, to talk about the partnership with the, the importance of the partnership with the mayor with the mayor's office um i know we had cd8 a representative from cd8 um who spoke on the day, uh, about the day of the operation and how much it meant to their office and how much it means to have a partnership with the mayor's office um, around inside safe and also a um, huge thank you to cd15 for their support as well i know they were on the call um and um, help share the information as well. So huge thank you to them as well. Um, another update that I did want to share is um, that yesterday actually marked the first day of 311 week. Um, so the city is hosting a competition amongst the, um, the 15 council districts to see which council district can increase their use of 311 um, the most. So Please, if you don't already use the 311 app, and again, you can download the app, you can call 311, or you can use the website to report or request city services. So please, if you don't already use it, please do. 
please download the app and please share it with your family and friends. It's really important if you see a pothole, if you street, if you see a street light that's out, if you see graffiti, um, if you have a bulky item and you need it to request for it to pick up, please submit that request. Um, this is vital when it comes to allocating funds and when budget time comes around, which is, I think the mayor is actually going to be releasing her proposed budget next month. So it's creeping up on us fast. Um, so I really want to make sure that our district is represented. Um, I did look up the top three council districts that submit 311 requests the most, and our district is not one of them. Um, so I would love to see our district up there. So please, if you don't already use 311, please do. And then also I do wanna just share that I do do um, presentations or workshops, I don't know how you wanna call them, on 311. And these are both in English and Spanish. So please, if you have a community group, a parent group, um, a group of students that meet regularly that you think could benefit from learning about 311, please let me know. And I'm more than happy to come and do a presentation with them. Um, another update, is that the mayor did um, swear in Chief Choi as the new interim chief of police, making him the first um, Korean American to ever lead a major city police department in this country. Um, and that happened on March 1st. And then another announcement related to public safety is that we are seeing an increase in um, the amount of applicants to the police department. So in January last month, we had 1,200 applicants apply to the police department, um, and that's a two-year high. So we are seeing an increase of people applying to the department. I'm, I'm not saying that's enough because it isn't, but the mayor is stressing um, the importance uh, to continue to increase our recruitment efforts because as we all know, uh, we are very low on officers and we need to get our recruitment numbers um, back up. Um, and then I know this is so long, so I apologize, but another update that I did want to share is that the mayor did lead a delegation um, to Sacramento um, a couple of weeks ago where she met with the governor and they were able to um, or they announced that they were able to secure 300 million in reimbursements um, at 60, mi 60 million of that is related to our response during COVID-19. Um, and then after she returned from her from her trip to Sacramento, um, her and the governor did sign an agreement to work together um, to help keep our um, underpasses clear, uh, which is great because I know that's um, you know that's something that uh, we definitely need in our community in the gateway. Uh, so basically, what this means is that the city can now um, go in and clean up those areas and then have the state reimburse them or Caltrans reimburse them. Um, so great news there. And then this past week, the mayor did lead a delegation in Paris, France, where she met with the mayor of Paris, because as we know, they are going to be the hosts of um, the Olympics and we are up next. And 2028 might seem like a long time from now, but it's creeping up on us fast and we need to be ready. So um, the mayor did meet with the mayor of Paris to kind of talk about what they're doing to prepare for the Olympics uh, when it comes to housing, homelessness, small business, um, youth, and everything that they're doing to see what we can implement here um, in the city of Los Angeles to be ready for the Olympics. Um, and I'll stop there because uh, I, I actually have a lot of updates, but you can also find the other information from our office in the newsletter that I did send out um, and tons of information and resources on there. Um, but yeah, that's all for my updates and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Are there questions for just- Just a quick comment. Uh, yeah, Rosalie, I just wanted to ask on the <clears throat> reimbursement from Caltrans, would that apply to the areas along the freeways on each side of the freeway, because we, you know, we have a lot of issues, particularly with the 105 Caltrans areas. Sorry, 
sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. Uh, so what the agreement says when the announcement was made is it says areas near the freeways. So it's not very specific. Um, so I apologize for that, but I'm more than happy to get details. But from the language, it seems like that it would include that. Um, but I can get clarity on that for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Frank. Yeah, I have a question. What about the lights for the underpass, freeway underpass on Main? Is anything being no. done? That Sorry, it, it, it cut off, so I'm not sure if she finished asking her question. Yes, I was trying to ask, are they doing anything for putting lights under the 105 underpass on Main Street? So that w would be um for Caltrans, but... um. I, I think that would be a question for the council district. Um, I know they have an initiative happening uh, to um, install new lights under the underpasses. Uh, I'm not sure if that includes that street, uh, but that would actually be um, under the state. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, caller uh, with phone number ending 726 has a hand raised. Can you unmute yourself? Hi, Mr. President. This is Officer Hamoka from Southeast. Hey, just to touch on the Main Street uh, under underpass is that uh, for the past year, it's been kind of a uh, hot potato between CD15 and um, Caltrans. But I think the agreement that they came to in the fall was that Caltrans is not actually a Caltrans uh, issue. It's gonna fall with the city. And I do know that Nick's been working on it diligently to try to get that corrected. Uh, I will follow up with him in an email um, actually tomorrow to kind of see the progress of that on that. But I know he's been trying to get that fixed. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we can move on to the next uh, report, CD15. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Nicholas, and I'm the Harbor Gateway representative for Council Member Tim McOsker. Um, so really quick, before I kind of go into uh, a few of the things I plan to talk about, I just wanted to go back and answer um, some of the things that were brought up. Um, first of all, uh, for that April uh, dump day that you guys are planning, um, keep in mind, we, we can work with sanitation. Um, and by we, I mean the council office. Um, we're able to get... Um, uh, dumpsters and any kind of, you know, equipment and things like that. So just let us know uh, ahead of time the date um, and we can arrange for all of that free of cost. And then um, also just to speak on um, I believe it was, uh, Frankie's question, um, Officer Moka kind of touched on it, but, you know, with the street lighting um, and with our underpass lighting uh, in particular, uh, it's been very difficult. Um, so one of the things that um, I'm sure, you know, both Officer Martinez, and Officer um, Hamaoka have noticed is um, the streetlight vandalism um, has been really bad. I remember a few months ago, um, we, we we worked with the Bureau of Street Lighting to get the lights underneath uh, the 91 and uh, Figueroa fixed. Um, and the other day that I went by, they're out again. Um, so, you know, we submitted more tickets, but, you know, right now, um, the Bureau of Street Lighting... Um, they have kind of massive delays on street lights being um, fixed just because of, of the sheer amount uh, of volume of vandalism and theft that's occurring um, and the kind of the tampering with the electrical boxes. So um, on the council front, I know they are already looking into solutions. Um, in, in October or November, um, the Bureau of Street Lighting put out a, a call for innovation um, and they've basically, they're both, ex, uh, they accepted basically ideas and, and they kind of looked into studies of other municipalities to see uh, 
what is working and what kind of technology is sustainable. So I know they're in, in some areas of the city, they've been pil piloting um, a solar lighting program uh, and just different measures to kind of move away from the status quo. Um, but that's all in progress right now. So um, in the meantime, you know, I just do encourage you uh, to, you know, report those street lights. I know uh, with RV, you know, I was going to report that the lights on um, kind of that 133rd area between Hoover and Vermont were fixed. Um, and that turnaround was, I believe, around 90 or more days. So uh, I know it is very frustrating and, you know, it, it does affect public safety. Um, so areas like that, um, we're going to prioritize and we work with the Bureau of Street Lighting to make sure all of that um, gets fixed quickly. Um, but go going back on to uh, what I wanted to address in the report, I wanted to start with um, the community plan update. Um, it was approved by the City Planning Commission. Uh, I did want to thank Rosalie for her public comment uh, down at the council chambers. Um, but for those unfamiliar with the community plan update, um, the Harbor Gateway, uh, Wilmington, and then also Harbor City in our district are all undergoing community plan updates. And it's kind of an update uh, for the zoning of properties. Um, so I know there's been a lot of legwork done by the planning department over the past five years. Um, it was approved by um, the planning commission. So now in the next few months, it will move to uh, the city council's planning and land use committee. And then after that, um, if approved by the Planning and Land Use Committee, it will go towards uh, the City Council for a final vote. Um, so most likely it'll be somewhere in uh, mid-2024, if not um, later 2024. Um, and then kind of going back a little bit as well. Um, so similar to the street lighting, what I've also noticed um, just in the past few weeks has also been kind of vandalism of metal plates um, so I know uh, we had that issue at uh, right in front of 118th Street School. It's just kind of a a little maintenance cover um, from DWP that was stolen. And as I've kind of went around the area, I've noticed in different places in, in the gateway and also just in our district as a whole, um, there's kind of been an uptick in theft of, of metal plates. Um, I believe, I forget who told me, but someone mentioned they were also trying to steal they saw someone attempting to steal the metal plates that they use to uh, cover the roadways when they're kind of doing utility work. Um, so for that, I I'd also encourage uh, kind of how Jocelyn said, we, we want to increase the use of three on one. So something like that can be reported. Um, it can be reported as a general street inspection. So I know there's a, a tab and a category for that. Um, and a, a lot of the times uh, once they receive, uh, once three on one receives a ticket, um, preferably if you have a, a picture of the incident, it's better. Um, and they'll be able to reach out to street services and they'll identify which utility is responsible, whether it's LADWP, whether it's a kind of a, a SoCal gas panel, they'll be able to go through the utilities and make sure uh, those plates or maintenance covers, whatever it is, um, are repaired. Um, and also uh, another thing you can use 3114 is for, you know, tree obstructions. Um, so I know recently on uh, right at uh, the corner of uh, the south, sorry, the northwest corner of the 118th school campus, that street light that was there, it was being obstructed by um, a tree that was overgrown. Um, so we, we were able to get um, urban forestry out there to um, trim the intersection and make it safer for the drivers going uh, eastbound on 118th um, to be able to see those lights clearly. Uh, and I did also want to touch on uh, our Clean 15 team. Um, and for those that are unfamiliar, um, our council member uh, in the past budget cycle, um, he got us funding for our own um, clean team. Um, and they did present at the in-person uh meeting uh, a while back. Um, so they've been very active in, in the gateway in particular um, in those underpass areas. So I know um, the Stanford underpass uh, with the 105 is, is a common area um, and also um, 117th um, and Athens Way. Uh, it's kind of a common area too where there's a lot of dumping. Um, Officer Hamoka and I, we 
kind of been working together and I know he's been able to get a uh a, a lot of illegal dumping cleared up and you know he's had some interactions too with people that have been caught uh illegally dumping so I want to thank him too for uh his work on that part but our clean team is still out you know all throughout the gateway um and also sanitation as well they work kind of hand in hand um you guys did meet um Nicholas also uh, from sanitation, I forget his last name, um, but he was the, the altered shift supervisor. Um, so a lot of the times the work that uh, the clean team isn't able to do or just the regular, the day shift sanitation isn't able to get done. Um, oh, Nicholas Fuentes, sorry. Uh, his altered shift team that works in the afternoon, a lot of the times they're able to clear it up. So I'm very grateful and appreciative for them. Um, we have a really great working relationship right now. Uh, and also, uh, I did want to mention as well, there's going to be two streets um, that are going to be resurfaced. Um, so tom starting tomorrow, one uh, seventeenth between uh, Maine and Spring, um, starting tomorrow, March 13th to Friday, March 15th, um, street services is going to be uh, reinstalling the speed humps. Um, so when the street was resurfaced um, a while back, the speed bumps were removed, uh, but now that the asphalt has settled, um, they're gonna reinstall uh, the speed bumps there. And then uh, additionally, um, 118th place uh, from San Pedro to Maine, um, starting on Thursday up until uh, next week, Monday, um, it's also gonna be resurfaced. Um, so uh, all of the neighbors should have received notice, but I just wanna you know make sure all of you guys are aware of that. And moving on to the next thing, uh, on the topic of speed bumps, I, I sent out kind of a, a mass email to um, everyone in my network uh, that LADOT has opened up uh, speed bump applications. Um, so I, I sent the link to the neighborhood council. I'll put it in the chat, but um, I don't know if I, it looks like it's disabled, but the links uh, are with the neighborhood council. I think they've already um, blasted it out. Um, but I do encourage... Uh, anyone who's interested in applying um, to get it done as soon as possible because the deadline is already on the 21st. So I know it's it's a quick turnaround. Um, they only gave basically everyone two weeks to get those applications in. Um, but just so you're aware, the minimum requirements for a street to be eligible for the speed humps, um, it has to be a residential street. Um, and it can only be uh, one travel lane in each direction. And it needs to have a speed limit of uh, 30 miles per hour or less. So I do encourage you guys to go on the website and uh, fill it out. Also, because uh, you need to get uh, signatures from four uh, residents that are on your block, basically supporting this. So once you apply, uh, the application is going to be citywide. So normally DOT is bombarded that day with applications from all over the city. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, your application will be selected, but the sooner that you're able to get the application in on, on the 21st, uh, the better. Uh, and from there, um, throughout the next year, you know, they're going to evaluate uh, those sites and they'll, they'll basically, the Department of Transportation will follow up um, with which sites are selected um, all throughout the city. And... Uh, Lastly, I did also want to bring up um, the Port of LA has opened up um, their investment grant program. So this grant uh, is specifically for 501c3s, so for nonprofits. Um, but if you know anyone that, or if you yourself have a nonprofit, um, I encourage you to apply. Um, what one of the kind of parameters, though, for this grant is there has to be some sort of nexus to the port. Um, so it could be health related. It can be construction related. Uh, an example is um, there's a nonprofit op uh, operating um, in the Harbor Gateway North that they do uh, welding. Um, they teach people how to weld. So something like that is a direct nexus to the port and their workforce. Um, but if you do have any questions about this, 
Um, I will make sure uh, I get the website out to you and I'll, I'll make sure I send it to uh, the neighborhood council, but they are having a workshop on April 10th. So if you're unsure if you can apply or uh, you just want more details, um, you'll be able to join them um, on April 10th and the applications aren't due till May 6th. So there's still about two months to be able to um, get those applications and those grants in. Um, but that about covers um, everything that I wanted to report on. Um, so if, if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them right now. Hi, Nicholas, this is Frankie. I have a question. Will the uh, streets that have schools on them automatically receive speed bumps? Um, so I do know that the city council last year, uh, they did approve a measure for installing speed bumps, particularly around um, uh, schools, um, but I'll have to follow up. I mean, obviously it's gonna take some time and a lot of funding to get every school in the city done. Um, but I do know there was a uh, kind of legislation already for that to happen. Um, so I will follow up with those details. I'm, I don't have that right on hand, but I'll, I'll make sure I get that back to you by next meeting. Okay, thank yeah, you. Nicholas, Nicholas, related to that, I think um, sometimes where schools are, um, the school is the main resident in, the air, in that area. And so it's um, a little more challenging to get um, signatures um, if the school is like the the main the main resident there um so that's a bit of a challenge but if there's a different way for schools to lobby for them that would be um that would be great um the other thing um that i was going to say related to it and now my brain escaped me so i have to come back because i'm having a uh, a brain lapse Oh, Nicholas, this is Rosalie. I just wanted to ask, you know, the street lights that are up going up the ramp to the 110 freeway, are is are they Caltrans or are they LA City? Um, which uh do you have like a particular Yeah, cuz the other, about a week or so ago I was traveling in the evening, getting on the 110 freeway at Redonda Beach Boulevard going north. And I noticed a number of the lights were out there. So I've been meaning to report it, but I wasn't quite sure which agency. Okay, are you, Um, I'm looking at it right now on the map. Are you referring to the lights that are on the ramp that kind of- They're, they're summer, it's on the ramp going on, but also, just as you get on the freeway, there's about three of them that were out. Okay. Yeah. If it's anything on the freeway, it would be Caltrans. Um, if it's any of the lights that are on Redondo Beach at that um, traffic intersection, um, it would fall under the city. Okay. I'll report I'll... to Caltrans. Okay. I, Nick, I remembered what I was going to ask. Um, the residents' um, signatures. Do they have to be property owners or can it be apartment residents? Uh, it could it could be a uh, apartment residents. So um, I I believe I I sent you the um the link directly. Um, so yeah, it does, I'm on it. I'm on there. Okay, yeah. So it does kind of have some guidelines. Um, so they yeah they can be residents as long as they live on uh that block that would be in support of possible speed humps. Got it. Thank you. And then, um, yeah, also, I'll have to get back with you, Mr. Trejo, because um, what I was mentioning as well about that legislation for speed bumps around schools, I have to follow up if that was strictly LAUSD or um, if something like environmental charter and, and charter schools and private schools would be included. So I'll, I'll get back to you with those details as well. Thank you. Okay, the uh, person whose phone ends in 583 has raised their hand. This is me, Rosalie. I'm sorry, I got disconnected and it says they cannot connect me back to okay. the meeting. So I'm just on the phone. So if you or Keith, well, I guess Keith could take over 
um, and because it's a little difficult from here um, on the phone. But yeah, you know, if you'd prefer, I can continue on the phone. Yeah, go so ahead I and continue. I, I, I don't. I think we're finished with the. Uh... That the report. report. Yeah. So now, though, we have. Um... I had I heard Nicholas. Yeah, we've had Nicholas, but look, I think now we're up to Phillips sixty six. I don't think anyone's here from uh, L.A. County Supervisor okay. oh, District Two. So it's now it's um... Nancy Perez. Philip 66, right? Yeah, actually, it'll be Nancy's here, but Lola Owalabi oh. is going to be the speaker. So, uh, Thank Lola, you. if you want to start and. Okay. All right. Will... Good, good evening. Um, just want to double check is it possible to share my screen or no? Well, we mm -hmm. hope we hope we tried earlier and <laughs> we were having technical difficulties. Um, okay. I don't know. Rosalie, if, if you can make me host, um, I, I can do the Zoom controls. I'm quite familiar with them. We've run millions of meetings as or thousands of meetings as a very distance learning. Um, but as a host, I'm confident I can enable them to share a screen. Or yeah. Who is that? Yeah, that's Dave Trejo, but I don't know when I hover over I, his name, I don't have the ability yeah. to make him. No. It might only be Miguel then. Dave, only Miguel can share, as far as I know, to make a host. Well, I'm some... I'm a co-host, and Miguel is the host, so. But Miguel... he can't. Might have, yeah. Have a co-host. If, Mig if Miguel's not there, you. you... And you can't um, kick him off. Um, it'll like you, it, Rosalie would have to be the host to empower others. Exactly. exactly. Yes. So, so. I, I keep pressing share screen, but it'll allow me to share, but I can't seem to. Uh... Okay, that's okay. Oh, wait yeah. a minute. It says multiple participation. Participants can share simultaneously. So let me click that. And why don't you, do, do you have the ability now to? Uh, I don't see it. Because I clicked on multiple participants. If you make her a panelist, she should be able to. Because I can, I can do it now, Rosalie. You did something right. You did something that worked. Okay. But, um, you Lola, might, you might have to make her. She is a panelist. Isn't she? Let's see. Yeah. Oh, no, I have to make her panelist, I think. OK, I'm promoting Lola to a panelist. So Yeah, so she should be able to share now. Yeah. Great. Okay, great. I think it should work now. Hold on. And this one. Yeah. All right. So can you, you guys see it, my Lola. Great. You got it. All right. So my name is Lola Owolabi. I'm the environmental team lead at the Phillips 66 Los Angeles Refinery. <laughs> And I'm here to talk to you about an improvement project that we need to complete at the marine terminal that's in the port of LA. Okay, so this project is required. Uh, we need to comply with the California State Lands Commission's initiative and this initiative applies to all of the existing marine oil terminals in California. It's not unique to 66, and it requires us to upgrade our birds to meet the current safety standards. So this project has many benefits. 
Uh, ultimately, it will reduce the likelihood of potential risks during earthquakes. It will minimize the chances of spills and enhance the war fire protection measures. So the main goal of this project is to construct a brand new MOTEMS compliant facility at Berts 150 and 151. And MOTEMS simply means Marine Oil Terminal Engineering and Maintenance Standards. Uh, these standards have requirements regarding structural analysis, seismic analysis, fire protection systems, so we have existing wooden docks at berths 150, 151. Uh, these, these berths have not been used since 2008. So this upgrade is essential so that we continue our long-term operations at the terminal. And the project will not result in any sort of expansion at the terminal or the refinery because to do that, we'll have to go through a separate CEQA permitting process with the air quality management district. So ultimately, we're maintaining our existing operational capabilities. So this project requires approval by the Board of Harbor Commissioners, and we need construction permits from the port, uh, which is considered a discretionary action. This triggers CEQA review. CEQA means Environmental Quality Act. So the Port of LA, uh, they're doing this review. They have to analyze the project impact to the environment. So they're completing an environmental impact report. So the draft of this document is scheduled to be released sometime in the second quarter, potentially April of this year. And there will be a 45-day public comment period. And we would appreciate your support of this project during this period. Um, ultimately, the port will respond to all of the comments that are received, and then the final environmental impact report will be prepared and presented to the board uh, for approval, and that could potentially happen third quarter of this year. Okay. All right. So just want to give a little bit of information about the project location. The project site is in the Port of LA, like I mentioned, and over on the right side of the screen, uh, you can see that at the terminal, we have facilities that include about 26 storage tanks, and then we have a concrete wharf, which is Burt's 148, 149, and that's what we currently use to conduct our vessel transportations. The birds I was talking about earlier, birds 150, 151 over here. Um, so those birds have not been used since 2008. They're in dock, and that's where we need to upgrade uh, our birds to be MOTEMS compliant. Any questions before I move on to the next slide? Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, what's the um, what's the draft the the number for the so if one wants to look up the EIR or something? What's the number or the name of the doc document? Okay. Yeah, I can send you that information after this. Uh, it's over. I don't have it right in front of me, but I can easily send that to you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next slide. So you can think of this project in three phases. The first phase, we're gonna do minor upgrades to this berth that we currently use, berths 148, 149. And the upgrades include just, you know, making improvements to the fendering system for docking the ships and barges. And then when that's done, we'll move on to the demolition it's 150, 151, where we're going to construct a new MOTEMS compliant berth. And then the last phase will decommission berths 148, 149 as transfer berths. So ultimately, our long term plans are to use this new MOTEMS compliant facility at berths 150, 151. And then we'll just limit the use of these berths to occasional storage of harbor equipment just to reduce congestion in the channel. Okay. 
Now, just more about the benefits of this project. Uh, the, this, you're looking at the new structure of BERTS 150, 151. This is what it will look like. So it'll be constructed of reinforced concrete supported by steel. The new structure will have a brand new loading platform facility. Uh, we'll also have a new fire protection system, hose handling equipment, manifolds, fuel prevention and response equipment. Uh, we'll also replace the existing loading hoses with better technology. So we'll be using pipelines that have modern articulated arms and that will reduce the potential for leaks during the product transfer process. We'll also have an upgraded bumpering system right here, and that will prevent damage to the ship or the dock structure when vessels are at the terminal. So overall, we're gonna have an improved and safer product transfer operation at the terminal. And I also wanna emphasize that this project will provide additional employment in our community by using the California Trades Labor for construction. So the present and future use of our terminal will not change. We'll continue to receive lube oil from ocean-going vessels, offload them into trucks for distribution within a 15-mile radius. Uh, the projected number of loop all tri uh, trips in the CEQA document is shown to be slightly greater than the baseline count, but in reality, this number is not increasing because we used a projection that was based on the highest number of trips in recent operational history, and that was back in 2019. So we've done this number in the past. Now, other products that we transfer include intermediate feedstocks and just, those are just materials that must be further refined to make like your jet, your diesel products. And those are transferred through pipelines to and from the Phillips 66 refinery. So we also have vessels with products like I mentioned for delivery to consumers. We import renewable diesel for delivery to gas stations in California. And I wanna emphasize as well that no crude oil is handled at this terminal because that is not allowed by our South Coast Air Quality Management District permits. So over here on the right side of the screen, you can see some numbers. Uh, the 23.8 million barrel per year number is a maximum number that we had to include as part of the CEQA process. So we provided a range of throughput numbers. The high end of that range is a 23.8 million number. And that translates to about 371 oh. per year. Again, this number is a conservative estimate. It's based on potential future business needs. Uh, it's a number that is based on existing capabilities at the terminal. So uh, it's definitely not a primary project. So just to summarize a couple of key points, this project provides the California state lands required multi-temps upgrades to the terminal. Uh, the LA refinery provides jobs to nearly 700 households, indirectly supports thousands of good local jobs. This terminal is considered an essential part of our portfolio. Uh, crude oil is not transferred at the terminal because it is not allowed by our permits. Uh, the project does not expand the terminal. It does not expand the refinery. We're maintaining our existing operational capabilities. And starting next year, uh, this wharf will be required to comply with a future California Air Resources Board regulation. And the goal of that regulation is to reduce like NOx emissions, diesel particulate matter emissions from the engines of ocean going vessels when they're docked at the terminal. So Phillips 66 terminal will definitely be in compliance with this regulation when it's effective. And then the last thing I wanted to touch on is when we're in the process of proactively meeting with 
the local neighborhood organizations, just to ensure that we're answering your questions and maintaining an open line of communication throughout the process. So please feel free to reach out to our number, uh, our 24 hour community awareness hotline if you have any questions. And if you have any questions now, I'll be more than happy to, to answer them. Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, so where, so where are they going to be piping the the oil from the refinery over here over to the over to the docks, or is it from the dock to the oil um, storage? So we already have existing pipelines that go to and from the refinery to the existing berths, which is one forty eight, one forty nine which is what we currently use. So when we do this project and we bring back these birds right here, 150, 151 back in service, all we need to do is just reroute those pipelines from birds 148, 149 to 150, 151. I have a question. Yeah, okay. Eva, go ahead. You said that those births were discontinued in 2008. For what reason were they discontinued? So back in 2008, I believe they completed an audit and determined that they were not in good position to be transfer births. So that's why they were decommissioned back in 2008. And uh, I have a question. So the the existing pipelines that run from your berths at the port up to your facility uh, just east of our neighborhood council, do those pipelines run pretty much in a straight line so that really there is no direct impact to our neighborhood council area? Well, that will not change with this project. I don't know that they run in an absolute straight line, but whatever configuration they're in, that will not be impacted by this project. But is there a map on your website that shows where those pipelines are placed? We can provide a map. I can follow up with a map for you. Yes, it would be helpful if you emailed us the map and also this PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. And okay. and the link to the full to the uh to the EIR if EIR. anyone wants yeah. Absolutely. Uh yes, I have one more question. Uh, uh ma'am. Um we have one of the refineries um uh, next to you're not too far from us and um, I had reached out to the community people about cleaning up over there because there's there's some railroad tracks over there, and um, the union the, the 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 train goes over there, and on the I should say the north side of the area, it's it's full of trash and everything. And I had reached out to the community people, and they said, "Oh, that's the city." And I, I, you know, um, I know this is probably not your department, but I think they really, they're really not engaging with the community to really get that that part cleaned up because it's right in front of your property, the Ooh. company's property. Okay, are you talking yes. about our lubricant? Exactly what property are you referring to? Is it um, it's on 135th and, and Broadway. Oh, oh, let me look at that. Okay, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's our lubricant plant that's in LA. Yes. Okay. Yes. That one over there. And then, and um um I re we you know, you know, other people have reached out, you know, to the city and everything to say they're gonna clean it up. And I reached out to the representative person that that's working you know with the community but they kind of dropped out okay. and so um it's an eyesore and like the other station across the street directly from there there's a look really nice it's nothing no trash well kept and i don't know what's going on with the one on on, on that the other side they got mm -hmm. one side all good the other side all terrible absolutely we'll follow up on that Please do, please do. 
because it, it's just, you know, they got in it, you know, homeless bands over there and I'm, and I'm a little far from there and I'm, and I'm sure, you know, all the people in the, in the community don't want to see that. And plus, you know, God forbid, you know, the railroad, the train comes and, you know, we don't want nothing to happen trying to prevent it. No, I absolutely understand your concerns and we'll follow up on that. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Arvi. I don't know if you yes. guys can all hear me, but my name is Nancy Perez. I'm the um, Senior Public Affairs Advisor at Phillips 66. Um, I took a note of what, what you mentioned, and we'll definitely look into it and um, make sure to get back to you on it. Okay, thank you. So if there's no other questions, we can move on to, uh, we thank Philip 66 for coming and we can move on to Octaviano Rios from Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. I, I I did have a question, which may have been yeah. Go ahead, John. Yeah, I had a question for the previous speaker, um, which may have been answered already, but I wondered what is renewable diesel. I thought all these oils and fuels were unrenewables. Am I misunderstanding? I don't think there's still, oh, Nancy is here still. Nancy, okay. can you answer that okay. question? It did, it did um, mention in the slide something about renewables. Yes, it did. It said that the these were this was for renewables, renewable energy, and then in another slide, I was able to obviously finally I got back onto the onto the um, screen. So and then also the Lola mentioned re, oh, oh no it was another slide that mentioned the renewable diesels. And I don't quite know what renewable diesels are nor renewable oil. Yeah, it looks like they've gone. So we'll um, okay, no problem. We'll I'm, we'll um, ask those questions of them. Yes, you know, they can answer. Yes. So yes, thank you. And just carry on, Rosalie, um, with with uh, asking Octaviano to is Octaviano here? Yes. Let's see. Okay. I don't remember him seeing him earlier, but he's an attendee. Yeah, I'm moving him to panelist. Oh, thank you. Okay, Octaviano, you should be able to speak now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Well, good evening, Harbor Gateway North Neighborhood Council. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'll try to be brief. I know you had a few reports here and, and you have uh, additional items on your agenda. Um, and um, again, my name is Octaviano Rios. I'm with the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment. Um, I'll, I'll uh, start off with um, one of the uh, awesome trainings that the city attorney's office, neighborhood council advice division uh, 
held in partnership with our department, which is the neighborhood, neighborhood council president training on the Brown Act. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, I think the last uh, Brown Act training that was held was in 2022. And that's a, that recording is available on our website, empowerla.org, for anybody to view. Uh, but hopefully your neighborhood council was represented at this last uh, training in late uh, February, I believe it was held, uh, where the the NCAT team uh, was available there to uh, share the facts about the Brown Act uh, and how it applies to neighborhood councils. Um, and um, and uh, just building that rapport and that relationship with uh, the city attorney's office. Uh, when you need them, they're there to provide that legal uh, advice. When you do have a conflict of interest or suspected conflict of interest, or uh, your board chair can reach out to them whenever uh, there is a legal matter or concern that uh, that uh, affects the, the whole board. Um, an exciting event that's coming up, March 28th, is the department's uh, uh, women's leadership event, uh, March 28th from 6 to 8 at City Hall. Uh, there's limited capacity, so it's uh, first come, first serve, uh, I believe, when you register. It's going to be held at City Hall in the Tom Bradley room. And uh, if you've been there, it's a fantastic space. Uh, very, very old school, glamorous, wonderful view of the city uh, in different directions. And uh, a lot of wonderful events uh, are held there. And this uh, great event is going to be held there to uh, highlight the positive leadership and advocacy work that uh, the women in the neighborhood council uh, system do um, every single year. And uh, boards uh, are able to nominate uh, individuals to be recognized. And if you have anybody in mind, uh, go to um, the RSVP link that was sent out through the NC profiles and a nominate a person. No guarantee that they're gonna be uh, exclusively selected, um, but um, I think it's it's still an honor to be recognized by your peers, even if it is just uh, with your among your neighborhood council. Um, there's so many different uh, ladies out there and uh, young ladies as well that are involved in the, in the neighborhood council system that have done some wonderful work for so many years. Um, so keep that in mind. So in the nomination deadline is March 15th, and the event, again, is uh, March 28th. Uh, homelessness liaisons is a big, it continues to be a big theme, a big big focus uh, for City Hall, uh, for different agencies, including the mayor's office and the council office. Uh, and the department is uh, continues to encourage our neighborhood councils to appoint at least one homelessness liaison and to uh, register uh, their information on a special form that we have linked up on um, on a, one of your NC profiles that went out. If you need that link, uh, let me know and I can, I can certainly send that to you. And just a quick reminder that the uh, deadline for bylaw amendments is a fast approaching April 1st. Um, and uh, if you need any assistance or need the application again, uh, let us know. I know one of the biggest uh, challenges is folks uh, trying to activate that uh, that Microsoft uh, um, highlighted feature uh, to uh, mark what's been changed within the document. So if you need help with uh, activating that feature, uh, please let us know. Well, Octaviano, I sent you what we voted on last month, but I don't know that you saw it. Oh, okay. Did you just send it uh, this week? No, last week or last the week, week okay. before. Yeah. So we'll check. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'll and, check my email and, and if I didn't get it, if it went to another folder, I'll, yeah, I'll check. And I don't think I did it right. And I I didn't have that application form. So, you know, and, and, and even if you don't have that feature, um, I tell people just take the shortcut and just highlight that word or phrase or paragraph that you want deleted or removed and just, uh, yeah, we're, it's pretty clear. One yeah. of the issues is that we didn't know. Well, you'll see in the email that okay because because we're now meeting by Zoom. If something, if some wording needed to go into one of the sections, and so that was 
we didn't know if the department had some standard language on that or the way it's worded already includes that. Got it. We'll, we'll take a look at it and, and if we need to continue collaborating, we will. Uh, thanks, Rosalie. Um, and I think I think that concludes my my report on my end. Um, you know, I know some folks have some expired uh, trainings. Uh, for the most part, um, most of you have all of your trainings done. So thank you for for being on top of that. Uh, but if you need any help uh, for those that have some expired trainings, um, difficulty logging in, or you forgot your password and need and need that get to get that reset. Uh, let us know. I know it's kind of kind of a clunky a platform for for many of us to kind of navigate. Um, a lot of steps, a lot of clicking, a lot of digging sometimes to to get to some of these uh, to renew your training. So uh, let us know if you need some assistance uh, with regards to that. And uh, and I saw on your agenda that you know you continue to uh, weigh in on the city budget uh, based on um, uh, you know submitting your priorities as a neighborhood council. I think that's awesome. I applaud you for for continuing to do that. Um, many many folks think that the city budget is su it's such a huge uh, um, uh, animal to tackle, and it's beyond them. But it really comes down to your needs in your neighborhood, and the neighborhood council is in the middle of that, and listening to the concerns of your of your stakeholders, and as well as listening to each other as stakeholders yourselves. So. Thank you for for continuing that uh, that tradition every year to to submit your priorities to to the uh, on the city budget and through that council file. And that that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Octaviano. Okay, are we? Uh, Lou we had her done hand number up. five yet, right, Rosalie? Right, but Lou has her hand up. I think. Oh, okay. I can't see anything again on my screen so thank you lou yes can you hear me perfectly yes. thank you thank you octaviano yes lou there are 99 neighborhood councils how many women will um is there a total number to this uh, to the award that um the nominations that's a good question. I'm I'm not sure if they're if they're capping the number of uh, of women that are going to be recognized at the event, uh, but they're not limiting the number of nominees uh, of folks that uh, you can that you feel should be recognized. Um, and I think that's important too to uh, be able to submit even uh, within your neighborhood council, women that you feel have done some awesome work uh, while serving on a neighborhood council. Um, and um, and I know there's something else planned beyond that, that whoever doesn't get selected to, to get that, that uh, special recognition at the event, um, there's gonna be some ongoing or planned uh, for um, ongoing uh, recognitions uh, throughout uh, the next few months so uh don't quote me on that because i know that it's still kind of in the works uh and i'm not sure how that's going to work out but uh but yeah okay thank you any anyone else who would like to say or ask anything about octaviano doesn't look like it no. Okay. Thank you. Oh, right. Eva, are you trying nope. to speak or? No, I'm sorry. I just didn't put my hand down. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, Rosalie, have we um, addressed item number five already? No. Okay. Should we go there next then? Yes. Our revised <laughs> fiscal year. <budget. laughs> thank you. Okay, so um, approval of the revised 2023-2024 fiscal year budget. Um, I call for a motion. <clears throat> Rosalie makes a motion. Thank I you. second. Eva Thank you. and Keith should be able to share now. Great.
So I wanted to point out that it's only slightly revised from our previous uh, revised mm -hmm. budget of September, just to okay. update a few of the line items. Yes, if Keith would just tell us where it's been uh, uh, revised would be excellent. Thank you. Are you able to share, Keith? He has shared, yes. Oh, okay. I haven't got it on mine. Okay. I'll try and close this. Okay. Yes, I've got it now. Thank you. I'm trying to get this out the way, this answer. That it'll make me leave the webinar if I don't, if I do. Rosalie, can you just go? We have it here, I think. Yeah, but... Revised March the 12th, yes. Right. Thank you. Brilliant. Which part did we change, Rosalie? Well, we added in the, um, the egg hunt, egg hunt under outreach. We added in the egg hunt and the t-shirts. The t yeah, the t-shirts and the retractable banner. So right. that yeah, that just. Uh, made our the amount for the outreach less the so it went down from whatever it was to four thousand seven hundred. Um, I'm confused. You said you just added two two items into the outreach, and then it's gone down. Well, the the category wrong. that says other outreach events activities that was reduced. Ah, uh, thank you. Because yes, we detailed some of the expenditures. Yes, great. And under the office operational, well, there's, I think, the, the, we have a little more accurate on the LAUSD permits, now that we know. And, and I believe we included the business cards this time. Uh, yes, the amounts for the business cards, and I reduced the office uh, ex expenditure, the office supplies, because, you know, it's getting near the end of the fiscal year, and we could see we're not going to be buying much else, and so then that maybe went down into the other outreach events activities. Okay. The I made the refreshments for meetings, I think, a little more accurate. You know, we just kind of updated what we'd already uh, spent because there was something that funding, as Keith knows, they're so particular, um, something that we spent and they said well yeah that line item wasn't really didn't cover it and they wanted us to update all the line items and you know we have this amount under Konica Minolta copies and we have to find out uh, because so far Keith has only been getting the invoices for the monthly copier lease. Uh -huh. But previously, under the old contract, maybe I think quarterly, they would ask me to run the the count of how many copies we'd actually made. And it, you know, gave an amount for black and white and color. I and don't then, even know that it was that frequent. It was quarterly. It was quarterly. It was I, quarterly. I yeah. it being that frequent when but I, I haven't there. seen anything. No, okay. and we haven't gotten that. And I want to check with someone. I guess it would be in Dunn who hand you know who coordinates that contract because it could be that when the city rewrote the contract that the copies are included. But 
It could be, but we don't know. So we don't know. We need to find, find out, out done. Right. before Thank the you. end of the fiscal year. Yeah. Thank you. That's lovely. And I think, and then we, at the bottom, under neighborhood purposes grants, we uh, we already had the 500 for the National Night Out support at the our, uh, Southeast Police Station, and we added in the reading. The reading partners. Yeah. yeah. That was just approved today. Yes, that we had a whole issue with funding. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, boy. It's... The amount of work that you have to put in behind the scenes <laughs> to get these things <laughs> approved is incredible. No, I do not. So, okay, thank you. I see we still have our money from the Clean Streets Awards. Yes, we have to figure out how to, because yeah. after all the work that Miguel did on, you know, the beautification of Stanford Avenue. Um, under the 105, it came really close, and then there was one last approval that Caltrans would not approve, even though it really has nothing to do with them. But well, it's very so, frustrating. Yeah, okay. so therefore, it still it, isn't spent. No, nothing, and therefore we couldn't use some of that money. So, but we will try and use it next year. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That's very helpful. Does anybody have questions about um, this updated budget? I see no... Was Eva? Eva has a hand, but I don't know if that's... Okay, Eva, do you have a question? No, no, I do not. Okay, thank you. Do you see any other hands, Rosalie? Oh, no. So I've got hands. <laughs> I mean, I'm able to see that there are hands or otherwise. Thank you. Okay. Um, so then let's go on to the position letters. Num item so therefore we, we have a motion, so we need oh, to yes, we do. Thank vote you. on this revised budget. <laughs> yes. I okay. call for a motion. Who? So Rosalie made the motion, Eva approved. So I'll do the roll call. Okay. Rosalie Preston, yes. Keith Pitts. Yes. Laverne Frericks. Yes. Vita Stonehawker. Yes. Dave Trejo. Yes. Harvey Powell. Yes. yes. Eva Cooper Pace. Yes. Are you there? Marvin Bell. Yes. Okay, I'll meet you. Oscar there. Ruiz. I found, I found yes. you. Yes. Frankie Mays. Yes. Is Jackie Jackson still here? Yes. I'm still hanging. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Elijah's not eligible to vote on this. So. I think Will is gone. And Craig Kusinoki? Yes. Okay, so the motion passes. Thank you. Okay, passing on to position uh, letter 6B. Approval, oh no, we're going on to approve 6A. Approval of a letter on the neighborhood council, our neighborhood council priorities for the 24-25 fiscal year budget. So may I call for a motion? I make a motion. Do you, do you even know what this letter is about? I mean, yeah, I haven't seen anything on these yet. We'll, we'll um, make a, yeah, let's do the motion. Okay. Yeah. okay, so thank you. Marvin, Keith, that Marvin, was Keith. No, oh, Marvin, I'm sorry, Marvin, thank you. Okay, so that was a uh, second. Anyone I'll second? second? I'll second. Yes. Yeah. So now we'll talk about the letter. Yeah. So the, yeah, you. people need to 
review it and see. RV has already commented. There's a couple other things she would like to see in there related to her district. Yeah, so it's going to be added on or you have to go over or you already? Yeah, just, well, I'll just mention I'm going to add in on. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, That's under transportation, yeah. Department of Transportation, traffic, the traffic signal, funding for the traffic signal at Rosecrans and Menlo, Menlo. and and the traffic, traffic calming. calming at Hoover and 135th, which has been approved, but but yeah, they always talk about the funding, funding, you know. right. Yeah, and also um, the, of the uh, alleys. Yeah, that also, and also keep the the uh, Hoover um, trimmed up and everything. Yes, the Hoover Avenue Parkway from El Segundo mm -hmm. to Rosecrans. You know what? I forgot. I need to add one more. As, as I think about Vermont, also um, um, Vermont Avenue. Um, from El Segundo all the way down to Rosecrans because sometimes it gets weeds and people be doing illegal dumping over there also. Oh, you mean the little parkway space in front of the... Yes, and also in front of the um, the whole, the, the place where they're going to be um, doing the housing for the people. Uh, I can't think yeah, of... Yeah, see, that's not... Um, that parkway is controlled by the county of Los Angeles. Oh, in front of that, a uh, friend of the hotel where they're going to put the, uh, yeah. where they're remodeling, yeah. that's yeah. the county? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. only the little narrow strip that goes from 135th to 140, whatever that street is. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then, um, well, okay, so we got to contact the county about that, about them keeping that part in the front because sometimes I see they have litter and overgrowth over there also. A friend of that place where where um I so can't it is their parkway or is are you talking about the one that runs right down the middle of Vermont? Well I know the run the middle of Vermont that's that's Gardena, the tree in the grass, but I'm talking about the one that's um between the in the middle between the street of Vermont and also the residence. Where the parking there's some parking. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the parking. That, yeah, that's that's Gardena, LA County. Oh no, you talk about the middle. I'm talking about the other little strip that people have uh it's over between. It's in the middle. Not not the middle of the well, of we'll okay, we'll we'll work it out. If it is in the city, then we'll mention it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Would it this be the right time to mention like the street repairs in Vermont, Figueroa, and Redondo Beach? Um. Yeah. You know, it, we used to keep that in our budget, but we'll just put it. Yeah, since Redondo Beach and Vermont are really bad, we'll put it yes. under street services. A new. You know, is this where the budget everybody consider if we put down and make make our needs known and everything on this letter, and it goes to CD fifteen right, and you know, right. the mayor's and office the and mayor, everything, right? Yeah, because, because her budget is coming out. Her draft budget will come out next month, so. So anyone else have anything specific that we should add in? Um, can I just uh, send it to you? I'll give it to you tomorrow? Okay, yeah. Thank you. I pretty much took our, la our last year's letter and just kind of shortened it okay. to make it, you know, Stand, some of the items stand out. I mean, occasionally a few things get done from year to year, but it's a little discouraging how much just not.
Okay, if there's nothing else, then we'll then say we... the revised uh, budget letter. Thank you. And Did we can include the street um street paving. I know you have this um sidewalks. Uh, are the tree plantings needed, but under the Bureau of Street Services, um, talk about sidewalk repairs, etc. But does this include the repaving of the roads? No, that's where Dave mentioned a couple of the worst ones. This under... is really pretty bad on that. What is it? I think it's either Estrella or Gonzalo, I think it is, just to the east. Uh, or just to the west. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll mention that. It's because okay, of the, the liquid amber trees that were not removed soon enough and mm -hmm. okay. have badly lifted the, not only the sidewalks, but the street. Okay. Otherwise, we'll do roll call. Thank you. Thank you, Rosalie. Okay, so Joan Jacobs? Yes. Rosalie Preston, yes. Keith Pitts? Yes. Laverne Frericks? Yes. Nita Stonehawker? Yes. Dave Trejo? Yes. Harvey Powell? Yes. Eva Cooper Pace? Yes. Marvin Bell? Yes. Oscar Ruiz? Yes. Frankie Mays. Yes. Jackie Jackson. Yes. Is Elijah, did he leave, I think? Yeah. Uh, Craig Kusinoki. Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Then the second level of letter of approval, um, 6B, approval of a letter to Caltrans on prioritizing assistance with homeless encampments along the 105 Century Freeway. And I call for a motion. Rosalie, okay, Keith makes a motion. And a second. I second it. Harvey. Yeah, Thank you. Second. And are there any questions on this letter? Or so yes. Uh Officer Amok, I believe, is still here. He had suggested that we write it. And um I don't know if he saw a copy, but I don't know if I should read it out. Um I know that. Ah, oh, here we are. Yes. I know that um, Miguel mentioned that on the second page, we should add in where we mentioned fencing mm -hmm. around locations that would help discourage encampments from forming. And I added including near the Avalon Sea Line Station area. Because Miguel pointed out that's a problem. Okay. But Officer Hamoka, I don't know if you saw the letter in our email and if you had any comments. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi. Thank okay. You. Perfect. Hey, first of all, good evening, everyone. And I just want to say thank you so much to the board for uh, putting this letter together. Um, I will say uh, shortly after. Uh, uh, my first talk with the, at the general meeting, um, I touched base with Robert and I will it's trending in a much better direction. Um, I don't know if anyone's checked the Broadway in Maine and even San Pedro, it does look better, but I, I do still think that, uh, drafting the letter is important. And so uh, I've read it and it looks great. Thank you. Okay. I was wondering if he had a supervisor and. It did mention 
in your emails, there was some other person mentioned. I, I frankly, I emailed both of them and they never did respond, but so we'll just go with what we have. And our, I just want to point out that our representative from State Assembly Member Mike Gibson's office is on listening in June Aglape, and he mentioned that their office is going to have a, a meeting with Caltrans later this week to touch bases. So he's also going to bring up the issue um, because there are also some issues along the 110 freeway with homeless encampments. They're not as bad as the 105 area, but but it it, it there and we we just kind of wanted to know what the process is when Caltrans learns about the encampments and uh, I understand that they do work with the city and LASA on the and I guess law enforcement, but and it, as uh, our mayor's representative Jocelyn Dominguez mentioned earlier, when there's an inside safe operation, we learned from the workshop that you know many agencies are involved, and I'm and I believe Caltrans is involved with those. So, I one of the ideas is that maybe we should get another one of these sites besides Hoover and the 105, maybe another site to the east as an inside safe operation. So, so June, did you want to mention anything further on yeah. the letter? Uh, yes, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Rosalie and uh, Mr. Chair uh, Miguel for uh, sharing uh, Ima and the letter and uh, definitely, you know, it's just so perfect. I mean, you guys are talking about Caltrans uh, issue whatsoever. And um, I know we're, we were going to, we're going to definitely going to meet this week and definitely address that. And I know um, if anyone is unfamiliar or familiar, uh, there's always what they call the uh, CSR, the customer service uh, receipt. You know, just in case if you see anything yeah. from a graffiti to homeless encampment, you know, you feel free to at least, you know, put that in the CSR, explaining it, uh, geographic location, the date, things of that sort. And usually uh, Caltrans will, when they see that, they, they would notify you that this is your ticket number. And of course, and they'll, they'll you know, acknowledge that you they receive it and then uh, pretty soon, um, they will definitely let you know that it's been addressed and taken care of. So they're they're really pretty much good on that so far, and um, that's pretty much I can say from there. And I, I believe uh, Treasurer uh, Keith uh, Pitts is in uh, listening too, right, Mister Keith? Are you there? I am. <laughs> Congratulations once again. Uh, uh, la last month. You know, Thank you. Uh, uh, I don't think they know. I'll, I'll make an announcement. But could you um, ask Moses to to he, he spelled my name wrong on the award, oh, Mr. Keith? I am one. I am Moses Junaglope, and yes, I oh. I took care of you. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you, Moses. <laughs> so when we see eyes, when we see each other face to face again, give me the old one. I'll give you the new one and all that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. You. Yeah. Now. But other than that, uh, I do, uh, I, uh, sorry to be uh, off, uh, what's it called, off the track, but I do want to acknowledge that, that the assembly member will be doing uh, a couple of things in event. I think there's one for uh, a tax preparation that's going to be happening this month. And then next month, uh, it, we'll be doing an expungement also on April 4th and then the tax preparation uh, my one of my colleagues has the date, but please feel free to ca uh, call our uh, office 310-324-6408 if you want to have uh, I think uh, you know for your tax preparation tax done whatsoever. Call our office, ask for ID. She's taking the lead on that one. Uh, I myself will be uh, think, taking uh, the lead for expungement along my uh, colleague uh, Dion Arnold. So that will be an April 4th for the expungement. 
And that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, of the magnificent board of Harbor Gateway North and guests, uh, is pretty much uh, my thing. But yes, definitely, um, uh, definitely, uh, once again, take care of the uh, issue and bring it up uh, on the Caltrans meeting. What award did you get, Keith? I, I was recognized for my work in the community for Black History Month. Great. Well done. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And thank you for doing that work. So if, if there's no other comments on the letter, we'll all do the uh, roll call vote oh, on the Caltrans. You. Joan Jacobs. Yes. Rosalie Preston, yes. Keith Pitts? Yes. Laverne Frericks? Yes. Nita Stonehawker? Yes. Dave Trejo? Yes. R.B. Powell? Yes. Eva Cooper Pace? Yes. Marvin Bell? Oh, looks like Marvin's left the meeting. Oscar Ruiz? Yes. Frankie Mays? Yes. Jackie Jackson? Yes. Craig Kusinoki? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you. So, um, also, I would like to, um, I don't know if Officer Hamaoka had spoken at all or if he had a report he had prepared, but I know I had not seen he, that he was there. So, um, Officer Hamaoka, were you wanting to give us a report at all? Uh, sure, I'll keep it real brief though, because I know okay. probably uh, uh, right. is, Thank you. yeah. So I'll keep it real brief. Just want to let you guys know uh, in the area of Harbor Gateway that I have, uh, I had a total of six reportable crimes over the last week. And our part one crimes are anything from like burglary, property crimes, all the way up to a homicide. So. Uh, six for the area that I have is is trending very well, so I'm happy about that. The biggest trend that I happen to see, uh, just there's no um, sp specificity to it. It's more just uh, just kind of random crimes, but that's along the Imperial Highway corridor. Um, one last thing is that our, our senior lead office has been working really hard on doing ongoing uh, task forces to address quality of life and uh, ongoing crime in our area. And over the last seven uh, shifts, I'm going to give you guys a, like a little recap of what we've done. So we've assisted in uh, 10 encampment cleanups. We've uh, been able to offer housing to 47 unhoused individuals and provided uh, about half of that, 20 of them, to uh, referral services. Uh, we, Although parking enforcement isn't our primary focus, we do try to help out where parking enforcement can't. So in that uh, vein, we've been able to issue 107 parking citations and impound 46 vehicles. And these vehicles are usually abandoned vehicles or vehicles that have been, uh, um, you know, you know, they're broken down, they're missing parts and they're a road hazard. We were also able to complete 45 requests for service. And that can range anything from graffiti requests all the way to cleanups to uh, bulky items and, and whatnot. On the enforcement, I mean, on the community service uh, uh, side, we were we completed two coffee with the cops and one walk a cop. It, um, and then on the enforcement side, we were able to uh, enact 20 misdemeanor arrests, five felony arrests, and confiscate two guns off the street. And this is all within the past uh, three weeks. So we try to stay busy. Um, again, if you guys have any kind of special focus, that you would like us to tackle, please let us know. We try to work that into our task force to be able to be as effective as possible. And with that, I'll, I'll, if anyone has questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you so much. Are there any questions for Officer Hamayoka? Any hands, Rosalie? Uh, no, unless Eva. Okay. okay. Thank you. So then um, committee appointments, public 
a public safety emergency preparedness committee appointment. Um, Rosalie Preston would like to be appointed to that committee. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? I will make a motion that we appoint Rosalie Preston to the Public Safety Emergency Preparedness Committee. Do I have a second? I'll mm -hmm. second it. Thank you. Are there any questions anybody would like to ask or any comments? I see no hands. Okay, let's go on to the vote. If you would take the a vote call, please, Rosalie. Uh, Joan Jacobs? Yes. Rosalie Preston? Yes. Keith Pitts? Yes. Laverne Frerich? Yes. Nita Stonehawker? Yes. Dave Trejo? Yes. Arby Powell? Yes. Eva Cooper Pace? Yes. Oscar Ruiz? Yes. Frankie Mays. Yes. Jackie Jackson. Yes, yes, yes. Craig Kusinoki. <laughs> yes. Okay, motion passes. Thank you very much. And item number eight, any board business and announcements? Reports from the committee chairs? So under uh, board announcements, uh, Will Yates, our outreach rep, has, has, has had to leave the meeting, but uh, we met with our field deputy, Nicholas Chavez, and some others on Monday morning to uh, start discussing a plan business breakfast, uh -huh. uh, focusing on the businesses along the our Figueroa corridor from El Segundo down to about 100 and 49th Street, and we will, once things are more finalized with them, we'll also invite some of the ones on Redondo Beach Boulevard and Gardena Boulevard, maybe even Imperial Highway, just to see. But the, the idea is to be able to listen to any concerns they have and also make them aware that there is a neighborhood council and the various city services that are available to them. And the Harbor Area Business Source Center will be involved and Karen Bass's office also. Okay, thank you. Okay, are there reports from committee chairs? Any committee chairs have a report? I see no hands. Okay. Then are there any other announcements apart from the fact that the Neighborhood Council Budget Day is June the 15th and will take place at City Hall? Anybody else? Nothing? I see nothing. So then I will adjourn this meeting at, and I can't see what the time is. So if somebody would like to mention the time. Oh, 9.16 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Just found it. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, as they say. And um, next time.